Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lost can be found. This video is my first take on the master difficulty of Ayaha and Atoha's Wrath, our Flame Element Agito battle that just released today. I'm pretty excited to check out this fight and share my first clears on solo and co-op play with all of you. These are the only clears I've done so far, so I'm a total beginner when it comes to this fight. I have played a good amount on Expert, but only in version 2.0. I never played this back in the day, it was when I was taking a couple weeks break from Dragalia Loss. So pre-2.0, my only clears on this were actually in solo, and I had only done two clears of it ever. And since 2.0 came out, I've been playing this fight on Expert difficulty a lot more. Had a ton of fun with it, getting to use some water element characters, of whom there are many I like. And now that Master Difficulty is out, I was pretty excited to check this out. So I started by doing a solo clear, and then I did a co-op clear with a coordinated group on Discord so that I could bring y'all a Poseidon Pietro clear for the channel's sake. So that's the second clear we'll look at today. There are timestamps if you want to skip around. Basically, I'm just going to commentate through the battles and give my overall impressions on the fight as we go. One thing I should say right off the bat is I was pretty surprised how solo feels very different than co-op. One thing you may notice immediately here is that this boss fight actually has two phases, which is a first for a master. Typically in the master difficulty, the boss is essentially only the second phase of the expert difficulty Agito boss fight. So that was the case for Kayan, that was the case for Ciela, and of course for Volk, our first master difficulty and first Agito battle that we ever had. But this time around, you actually fight the twins in their normal form before they transform, and they're a little bit more dangerous in phase one than we're used to on the expert difficulty. I notice they have some moves that can kind of pin you in place and one-shot you, more cage action happening, the purple dashes happen sooner, but the pattern is different on solo compared to co-op. So yeah, that is one thing to pay attention for here in, uh, in solo play. Took me a while to whittle down this phase. As far as the team I'm using, I basically took my auto team from uh, the expert difficulty. And the only thing I changed was I switched to Hunter Cerise instead of Lily. That was actually a mistake. I switched them basically because I wasn't sure if you could freeze the master difficulty on this fight. So I figured I might as well switch to Hunter Cerise instead of Lily. It turns out that you can definitely freeze master difficulty so I probably would have been better off with uh, Lily there so that I could get some freezes in and in particular dispel some of the strength buffs that the boss was casting. The other mistake I made is my shared skill on Tiki is a bog inducing shared skill. In my mind, I thought that bog was in the same bracket as freeze to where it would reduce Ayaha and Toha's strength. It's actually in the same bracket as frostbite so it reduces their defense and I have plenty of Frostbite already on this team, so I really didn't need to bring a bog-inducing move. One thing you'll notice also about the Master Difficulty, this uh, glorious laser beam attack, the spinning Twin Rova style Fire and Ice, is uh, more frequent, I want to say, but also has some tricks to it. It can actually turn around in the middle of the uh, rotation, which is kind of cool. I definitely enjoy checking that one out, especially in co-op, but even in single player, I'm going with a manual clear here, Primarily because I have gold Fafnir's on a couple of my team members and I just wanted to be extra safe. I realized I had played it really conservative with uh, Master Ciela and uh, definitely was too safe in my first clear of that one. I didn't have any gold Fafnir's and then I of course didn't get the extra gold from clearing it. It also made it a little bit uh, easier and kind of just very redundant, just very grindy. So for this one I decided well, let me try two gold Fafnir's. So here, Gala Eli and also uh, Jiangxia have gold Fafnir's, but nobody else does. That ended up being kind of important because Hunter Cerise was almost going to die a couple of scenarios here. But since she didn't have a gold Fafnir, she ended up being fine. And my lead Tiki doesn't have a gold Fafnir either. This was a mistake on my part. I always get mixed up the black versus the white color on this. I have a hard time differentiating between them. So, or I just don't remember very well. So I attacked the one that caused stun. One thing you may have seen with them is that they now have the uh, ability protections on them. So you'll want to afflict them if you want to do, deal more damage to them. Um, you saw like a red and blue orb around them, or not orb, but ring, I guess you could say. So you want to use frostbite to try to get rid of uh, one of the rings and then be able to deal more damage, I believe. 
Anyway, we're able to get our break here. And those cannons are firing from behind whoever they target. Potentially into the group, but in, uh, in single player or solo, like the AI are pretty effective at dodging a lot of the moves that come out. The one that I think can kind of trap you or trip you up is the alternating purple and red circles. This one where you see a stun pile uh, summon there that uh, was a butterfly that exploded into a stun, I guess, pile. I don't really know what to call it. It's like a stun haystack. Um, yeah, that can be kind of dangerous in co-op, I noticed, because you get more of them. That was an example of the, uh, the beam changing direction. And this is definitely a longer run solo fight. I don't know if you can auto this yet with four gold Fafnirs or maybe three gold Fafnirs. But for now, I was able to solo it with two. I guess you could probably solo it with three, but it might be a little bit less consistent. Maybe one of your AI might die. Although now that I know that Hunter Cerise can sort of be replaced here, if I had a better melee DPS, I might replace her and maybe that would be good. This phase is a little different, but so far I've just placed everything at the top and it hasn't really come back to punish me. I don't know what, whether you're supposed to place it somewhere else or not, but I have seen people putting it to the sides, which I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure why or if that would matter in solo or not. But in co-op I definitely saw people putting it to the sides. We're getting close to the culmination of this match here. Tiki being a really solid lead since when she is in her dragon form, can't get afflicted or anything. One thing, uh, I guess one of the only disappointments I had with the original fight, the expert difficulty fight of Ayaha and Toha's Wrath, is I do feel like it kind of has these stall mechanics. For example, when you place the purple crosshairs and you have that black hole, as well as this moment when you have the two butterflies that try to meet in the center, and you can't damage Ayaha and Toha. I feel like if you could still attack her during those phases, that would make things a lot more interesting. It would feel a little bit more compelling as far as being able to do things other than just dodging. But I do kind of appreciate that they put a dodge-centric portion of the fight since that isn't too common. It's just that we had something very similar in our old flame content in uh, Hybrid Hilda's trial. Of course, if you remember in that trial, in the Moosebellheim and Grand X Moosebellheim attacks, you can't really attack her too easily depending on your character type. You mostly focus on dodging instead. But yeah, anyway, that was it for the solo clear. Kind of straightforward, got to use some fun units I like, such as Cerise and Tiki. Actually got to do some manual play for a change. Have Gala Ellie and Jiangzi in the back, repping the team, keeping everybody healthy. And was only able to get 200k rupees, which is unfortunate, obviously. You spend 40 stamina, you expect to get 600 rupees for that, but I only got 200, so not as good. But you do want to get these masters done at least once for your first clear. So that was my first clear in solo. I'm going to accept my weekly bonus, and then we will switch over to co-op. So as I mentioned for co-op, I was with a pre-made team. My team here had a lot of good uh, aspects going for us. We had freeze, we had bog, we had some nice frostbite. A lot of players on this team had some form of self-healing as well. And I wanted to bring Pietra with Poseidon, obviously because Poseidon has just been stalking me since uh, I went for Gala Cerise. I got another Poseidon on my free summons on the Dulcet Delights banner, by the way, and am now sitting on 200 of the uh, Poseidon Draconic Essences. But uh, yeah, that's why I decided to use Poseidon with Pietro. I guess as an added plus, I get a little bit extra size on my life shields, or rather regular shields, because yes, unfortunately, Pietro still uses regular shields, was not really benefited that much by the version 2.0 changes. He's still one of the weakest characters in the water element, but a character I like to use nevertheless. And this is a very messy run, but that's honestly kind of what I love about it. These day one runs, where not everything is perfect yet. There's a lot of chaos happening, a lot of confusion as we're learning the mechanics. I'm definitely learning them for the first time here with me not ever having cleared this before at all. And this took about five or six runs to put together. The first few runs I was just very confused because as you saw, the co-op fight started off totally differently, right? There was an immediate DPS check where we had to try break somebody, in this case me, out of that uh, prison that was there. And that's not the only DPS check we're going to have, because here Karina gets locked up. And I wasn't paying attention, I didn't realize my two teammates there were stunned. So I probably should have done this earlier, but I decided it was time for Poseidon to make his move. 
So I was, I think, able to break the orb, but nevertheless, Karina couldn't get out of the purple in time. So she still got hit, but she survived. That's what I think went down. I might not have actually done anything at all there. Maybe she just took the full hit. But I tried my best with Poseidon and Pietro. One thing you'll notice here is I'm not casting my third skill. That was also a mistake. I thought I had the Agito skill on and had already used it, so I thought I was having uh, had the critical rate effect, and I didn't want to swap to the defense effect. It turns out I actually brought Patia shared skill, and I totally should have been casting that throughout, but uh, I just didn't until the very end when I realized. So here you see the crosshairs. For example, this one, it went up. My teammate knew what to do. I didn't really know what to do here, but I've seen it go to the side. I'm not really sure what it's about. It's a little hard for me to read what's happening on the sides of the arena with how much of the screen shows. So if y'all know what that is about, please let me know. But I haven't been able to really figure that out yet. I, I feel like you can just run it up, but I could be wrong. One thing that uh, I noticed is there is that red circle that will target one of the players during that section. Apparently that is a circle where you want to stack together. When I initially saw that, to me it looked like a circle that you would want to try place onto the boss to damage the boss, since this fight in the expert difficulty didn't have any type of uh, group up marker that we tend to see in more of the high dragon fights and some of the Agito fights like Kayans as well. But uh, we're pretty good here, we're, we've survived a good amount, and uh, the part that was tripping this team up the most was probably that first part with uh, with the black hole, especially when I would get it and kind of not know where to go with it. One thing that uh, was pointed out to me is you tend to want to save your dragon until the end after you're out of the black hole safely, and you can use it to tank that marker or tank it as a team. I'm definitely loving the fact that my teammates have uh, Gauna and Krenna here, since it feels really good to recharge my skills, especially my healing skill at the end there since it's very slow to charge. It is low in shared skill. And at this point, I again just forgot that uh, these black ones were not good for me. I did run Pietro with 100% burn res just for safety, give me some flexibility, and because he's really not exactly a DPS powerhouse here anyway with Poseidon, but he doesn't have stun res, so those did do some damage to me. And uh, this got dicey, but again, another moment for Poseidon to shine. When Pietro has a, a moment of struggle, bring out Poseidon, tank one of those beams, and uh, we're good to go here. So I was hoping to get a Poseidon KO with this. You'll see what ends up uh, KOing the boss after all. But now that the boss's HP was fairly low, I felt pretty confident that we we're going to be able to clear here barring something unusual. Nice that I got to take a hit there and finally get into the red. I don't know if I had even been in the red yet so far, but I did have the resilient offense worm pin on because of the burn res that it provides through the affinity boon system. Anyway, I used my Poseidon to try to get a KO, but obviously did so prematurely because Ayaha and Totoha still had plenty of HP left. But I thought that if we could just survive this phase, we'd probably be in good shape to get the clear here. This marker was a little precarious for Pietro there, but it uh, seemed to work out just fine. We moved some stun toward the boss, and I just couldn't get off that last quester's best in time to get the KO. But uh, yeah, that was my first set of clears for this fight. Pretty fun, pretty surprised how different it is in co-op and solo play. I definitely feel like this one is a little bit more splashy, a little bit more exciting than Ciela's Wrath. So for me, this was a positive overall. I'm looking forward to playing this one out a little bit more, but I might wait to see if we get double drops, similar to how we got for Volk and Kayan. I could see that happening eventually, especially as we transition toward harder difficulty and new endgame content. That is going to do it for today, everyone, though. So thank you as always for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.